All right, all right. Welcome to the show, everybody. Today we are going to be looking at Mesozoic mammals, the first two thirds of mammal history. This promises to be a very exciting show. So let's get to our reporter on the scene, Audie Pithecus, and we'll check in on all of the exciting things going on with the Mesozoic mammals. Where are you looking for these Mesozoic mammals, Audie Pithecus? I have looked and looked for mammals during the day, and they just aren't that easy to find. But I realize that many of these come out at night. Their vision isn't all that good, but they have developed a sense of smell. And so we are going to look for many of the early mammals by hunting around the Mesozoic era at night. That sounds like a plan. You gotta hunt the mammals where you can find them. So, why don't we check in with that early group, the Haramayids. What did you learn about them? This is my footage of my search for the Haramayids. Yeah. They're small. They're from the Triassic, meaning they're early. I'm not sure, but they might be related to the multi-tuberculates which come later. That's about all I know about this group. Well, unfortunately, that was a bit of a disappointment, but how about we now travel to those southern continents of Gondwana and check out the native mammals there, the Gondwana Thiers. What did you find about them? Here I am on a quest to find the Gondwana Thiers. These were mammals which lived in the Cretaceous through the Eocene, surviving the end Cretaceous extinction only on a southern continents, even Antarctica and India, because this was formerly one of the southern land masses. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a good look at these Gondwana Thiers. For a while, I thought they were related to maybe anteaters, and then I thought maybe they were related to multi tuberculates, and now I really don't know. So, they're small mammals living in the south. That's all I know for now. Help me out here. We're looking for some excitement. Uh, how about we try those multi-tuberculates? They were, after all, the most common and the most diverse mammals of the Mesozoic. What's exciting about them? I was able to see many of these multi-tuberculate mammals. You see, these seem to be the most common mammals of the Mesozoic and the most diverse. Some have even called them the rodents of the Mesozoic. Now, while they weren't rodents, they had many similarities in that they had chisel-shaped front teeth. They were very common, and so they probably were the equivalent of rodents. They actually survived the mass extinction at the end of the Mesozoic era, and they didn't really decline and become extinct until the true rodents evolved in the Oligocene. Many were mouse-sized, but Tania olebis is the largest. It was about the size of a beaver. And some specialized a little bit. Tylodus seemed to have adaptations making it similar to squirrels. They also had some tooth modifications. They were missing the canines in their upper jaws and the canines and premolars of their lower jaws. And so their teeth were very unique. That's our excitement. We've got things that kind of remind us of, of rodents, of squirrels, of beavers, and we're not even sure that they're mammals. Well, how do you classify them? Since I don't know that much about most of these little mammals, classifying them in groups is a bit difficult. I, I had this idea that maybe some of them could be put in a new group called Allotheria. Allotheria would be perhaps the, the multi-tuberculates, Haramayidans, and Gondwanatheres, and perhaps they would be mammals, but more distantly related to the monotremes, marsupials, and placental mammals alive today. And then some of my friends said, well, maybe they're not even mammals, but mammaliforms. And, and so I'm not quite sure how to classify some of these or even how to use the word mammals. Some people think that some of these are mammals, while others think they are just the cousins of mammals.